Turns out hacking usually doesn't look like this. I'm in. In fact, one of the most common ways to hack a website actually looks like this. Don't worry about all the details, we'll go over them later when we hack a blog post. This video is a brief introduction to cross-site scripting, or XSS. Cross-site scripting is a pretty common web vulnerability that allows users, like a hacker, to inject malicious code into websites that aren't theirs. If successful, the website will run with the infected code, not knowing that anything is wrong. For example, let's say I have a blog with a simple comment section. Normally, users would just enter a comment and then hit the comment button like this. Behind the scenes, when the comment button is pressed, it's sent to a server which first processes the information, then stores it, and gives us a response that would look like this. Without extra information, the browser assumes that this response is all fine and dandy, which it is in this case. Or I guess not if you're more of a dog person. Sorry. However, a hacker might enter some malicious code in the comment box. Like before, the comment with the malicious code will be sent to the server and will get a response. This time, however, an attack will be executed. Websites can't tell the difference between valid markup and malicious markup. Cross-site scripting takes advantage of the fact that websites just execute whatever they receive. You don't have to understand all the code here. Just note that there's a script contained in the malicious code. Let's say that the script redirects the user to a music video when the comment is hovered on. The browser doesn't know this and instead thinks that everything is fine and unknowingly executes the malicious code that the hacker entered. Everyone who visits the blog post will be impacted because the malicious code was saved onto the web server permanently and will always be there. Just perfect, right? Sorry. That was a stored XSS example, although there are many different types of XSS attacks that could each branch off into their own videos. Also, comments aren't the only things at risk. Any data provided by a user can contain the risk of an XSS attack. Think advertisements, URLs, any sort of text entry form, and more. For another example, let's go back in time to when MySpace was popular, home of one of the most famous XSS attacks, called Sammy. A user wrote a script and used XSS to force everyone who visited his profile to add him as a friend, as well as copy itself on the visitor's own profile. Within 20 hours, over 1 million users had followed him, and MySpace even had to shut down their whole website temporarily because of the incident. Now that was back in 2005, but even today, there are several incidences that show us why XSS is a vulnerability that we should keep our eyes out for. And although the two examples shown in this video were pretty harmless, it's important to learn about XSS and cybersecurity in general so that we can develop ways to combat it and protect our sensitive information, our privacy, and more from damage. 